All right, guys, Rich here from the RC Network, and this is going to be build update number one on my three racing Sakura D4 rear wheel drive chassis. Now, this is the newest platform from three racing, and I've got to say, really impressed that they came out with both the rear wheel drive and all wheel drive versions of this platform. Now, of course, the D4 is the successor to the old D3 line, and the D3 was only available in a counter stealer all-wheel drive platform. So with that, uh, the new kit here, lots of cool little items that were included in the kit that, you know, for a $100 or right over a $100 kit, I've got to say, pretty impressed with the parts and uh, everything else that's included with this. Now, keep in mind, there's no electronics in this. You do have to put it together and no body is included with this drift car. So, um, all in all, really impressed so far. I'm about two, two and a half hours into the build, and I've got pretty much the rear bulkhead, the front bulkhead, the steering, um, all the turnbuckles, the shock towers, and uh, started on the center um, uh, pulley system and also the center or the the spur gear for it. So got the motor mount in. Uh, pretty much everything is set to go and start to... Uh, put in some electronics now. Now with this, um, I want to point out some of the things that I found maybe confusing in the owner's manual and or um, a couple of issues with parts. So with that, uh, some of the upgrades that I've seen, now you do get a um, fiberglass reinforced uh, chassis here, or FRP, I believe they call it. Um, this is a improvement over the D3, where the D3 had that kind of plastic tub chassis um, uh, style of, of chassis. You do get the same uh, top plate or a similar top plate to the D3, still that fiberglass reinforced. Um, you do get an improvement on the shock towers. Um, the shock towers on the D3 were plastic. These are that same fiberglass reinforced or really equivalent to carbon fiber, so without the splintering issues that I think carbon would have. Now with that, uh, I did find that on the flip side over here in the front, uh, they are using a lot of parts from the all-wheel drive version. Now the bulkheads, everything else would accept a drive shaft or a, a front differential, but uh, they're kind of reusing the parts on the rear-wheel drive. It would have been nice to see you know, specific rear-wheel drive uh, parts, except for just the... Uh, the lower A arms here are marked RWD for rear wheel drive. So with that, I think that's probably one of the only unique items. Now the upper A arm up here, uh, or upper control arm, I put those on backwards initially. <laughs> so used to, um, you know, some of the ARMA vehicles where they are mounted the opposite um, direction or um, they have the L shape and the opposite way. And my steering angles were completely screwed up. Took me a little while to figure that out, and of course the owner's manual. Uh, if I would have read it, it would have been in there. So, um, on to uh, some of the other uh, owner's manual issues. Um, there was a couple of items that were included in my parts bag that I was assuming were upgrades, but they really weren't. Now, uh, mounting the spur gear here, you do get a plastic cover and a plastic mounting point that rides on like a pin drive. Now, in my kit, I actually got a couple of what I thought were upgrade items. So I got this nice aluminum uh, mounting piece, but there was no pin drive to mount this to that center uh, pulley shaft. So this was included, wasn't mentioned in the owner's manual, and I was kind of confused. I actually started mounting this, you know, thinking, cool, you know, this is something that I didn't see in the D3, uh, but in the end, uh, ended up not using it, which is kind of a shame. So. On to uh, some of the owner's manual things. Had a lot of issues with the um, the the center pulley up here getting it mounted, and it, it was just a little bit confusing on um, the owner's manual as far as how everything kind of got mounted in. And you can kind of see right here, there's you know a lot of, of information in this small little circle here, and you really have to pay attention on how everything goes in. Keep in mind the orientation of the kind of uh, little shim right here, that little um, pink shim, and you know, it, it was just a little bit tough getting that. I had to kind of walk away and you know, catch a breather, you know, take a little rest from, from building. So, but all in all, owner's manual is pretty decent. Um, they, they don't mention anywhere in here about Loctite, so keep that in mind if you're going metal to metal. 
throw some Loctite on it, it'll definitely help you out. Um, Loctite is not included in the kit that I saw, at least not yet. So, But uh, overall, owner's manual is pretty pretty well detailed. Um, a little bit confusing on these uh, toe blocks. Um, you know, they're, they're very similarly marked, you know, FRR, FRL, RFR, RFL. And you really had to kind of pay attention. These little shims up here were kind of a little pain in the butt. They're, they're a half millimeter shim. It, it would have been nice if they were just make the toe blocks correct because everything was shimmed up one half of a millimeter. So um, I guess nice that it could possibly be a tuning option later, but um, it was just kind of a pain to get those in. Now all of the underside screws are six millimeter uh, flat head screws, and it just didn't seem like it <laughs> made contact all the way. I'm so used to some of the off-road applications where you know you're sinking that screw in for the term of the contract, so to speak. But uh, anyways, they they seemed a little bit short, but maybe that's just me with some of my off-road knowledge. Um, back to the kit here, um, nice little upgrades here on the front with these kind of uh, uh, pink anodized aluminum uh, like kind of steering blocks up here. Uh, everything just looks great. I mean, once again, $100 kit. So um, really nice items on here and I really can't wait to get this thing going. So, well, that's enough of me talking about the D4. I'm going to get building some more and get you guys back on update number two. Now, oh, one thing I didn't mention. Oh, parts issue. Alert, alert. Um, right here, there's supposed to be a um, hole drilled into this front shaft and there isn't. <laughs> All the other ones had it. It looks like it's marked right there, but it never got drilled. So I'm going to attempt to drill myself, but I'm also going to contact 3 Racing to see if they can replace that for me. So anyways, that hopefully will not uh, deter my build uh, too much. Um, but anyways, I didn't want to report that. So, well, guys, that is it. If you have any comments or questions, please post them on down below. And as always, thumbs up and subscribe. That's it for now, guys. Over and out.